Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the show. And today we have a very, very special guest for you. We are joined by Kate Hodge. You guys may know her best as Michelle in Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, as well as Carla from Rapid Fire. Kate, how are you today? I'm doing just good. Just good. I'm doing great. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing fantastic. Um, as I said to you before, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. Um, it's going to be an absolute pleasure to get to talk to you. Um, I know a lot of the fan base, uh, most of my fan base are primarily horror fans. So the idea to get to talk to you uh, about Leatherface uh, is going to be absolutely amazing. Cool. Yes, it was a great time many years ago. Um, so kind of to start things off, really, um, how did you first start your career in acting? Well, I was um, born and raised in Northern California, San Francisco area. And I fell in love with the ballet. So I was doing a lot of um, ballet. And then I got into UCLA as a theater, as a dance major. And then I got into the theater department and I fell in love with theater. And, and going to college at UCLA, there was always, um, film sets like you know they were filming things around mm -hmm. and I remember one afternoon I just sat and watched them make a movie I forget which one it was but it was like 1982 <laughs> um, or no 1986 and I thought this is just what I want to do so I put on my big girl boots and I got into some plays and I got an actor and a manager and, a, and an agent and just started hitting the pavement I think Texas Chainsaw was my first, no, like my third acting job. Wow. I mean, what a huge role to have as your third role. I can imagine um, there must have been moments for you where you felt so much pressure. I was just so enthralled with it all. I dreamed of doing it for so long that I was just like, I'd watched sets and I, you know, I'd studied acting and I knew what to do. And my co-star William Butler was amazing he was a veteran that by that point in horror movies so he was really really helpful and and it was just a really great time um so uh, you mentioned before about how you kind of first started with sort of a uh, theater work as well um so for you do you feel more at home doing screen work or theater work or wh where do you kind of feel naturally you feel best at <clears throat> Well, they're so different, but I mean, mm -hmm. there's nothing like doing live theater, but then there's also nothing like the sense of family on a, on a film set. Um, they're totally opposite things, but they're both just, I can't pick one favorite thing. <laughs> I like it all. I mean, I do it. Yeah, <laughs> that's the thing for me, for somebody that's not in acting at all. Um, I just can't think of anything more terrifying than performing live on stage in front of people. I don't know how you will do it. It's, it still to this day blows my mind. Well, I think because we're all a little bit crazy. It is the most terrifying <laughs> thing to do. I did a play in Cleveland called Good People. And every night as the intro music was playing, I would be like, what am I doing? <laughs> you know, it's still terrifying, but it's yeah. a rush, you know, sort That's of an adrenaline. Yeah, and those, I guess those feelings kind of make you feel really alive and you feel like this is what, what life's about. Exactly. It's almost like, you know, those people who jump out of planes and stuff. It's yeah. more of an emotional terror than physical. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as you said, um, you know, we'll kind of jump straight into it with Leatherface, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Um, as you said, that was your third acting job, which... I mean, to, I, I know maybe as at, at the moment you were really excited and energetic and enthusiastic to kind of do the role. Um, but maybe now, you know, it is such an insane thing to to picture that, you know, to be a lead woman in such a huge movie of the franchise. How, how does that feel yeah. for you now? I'm so proud of it. You know, I go to some of these conventions and the movie really, you know, it's so popular with the fans and I just feel so lucky to have been a part of it and to have been so, you know, green. I remember like the first scene, I don't know how this could have been my third acting job, but for some reason, the, the clapper board, I was oh, like, okay. the, 
you really do that? Like, I don't know. <laughs> I was so green, but I was just, um, and we, we shot in sequence. So it was kind of like filming a play. You know, we started at the beginning and went through the whole story. So that made it simple. I didn't get all confused. Like we're doing this first and then doing that scene, you know. Yeah. And of course I got to work with the great Viggo Mortensen and Jeff Burr who directed it. It was really fun. And R.A. Mihailov, who was Leatherface, he was very scary. Absolutely. But, um, yeah, and I mean, you've worked with Ken Foray as well, who's also huge in, course, in, the, yes. in the acting industry and, and in horror. Um, yeah. That's kind of a question I had with you. So as you said, going into this so green and, you know, looking back and, and to see such, to me, a, a hugely star-studded cast that I think doesn't really get the appreciation it I think it truly deserves. Um, what was it like to work with all these people on set? Well, Ken Ferrer, I can't believe I forgot to mention it. He was wonderful, total veteran of, you know, the horror genre. Um, I was sort of, you know, starstruck, mm -hmm. but then the, the shooting schedule was so grueling. We were filming at night, every night, for, for four or five weeks. So it was just, it was so fast and so violent. <laughs> Certainly when the, when the sun went down, the car stuff yeah. and, and the gas station stuff, that was really fun. But then when we got into that house and all the darkness, it was just grueling and we just all came together and everyone just really worked well together. There was no, you know, hissy fits or anything. It was just, it was, they made it very easy for me to be a newcomer. That's amazing. Um, and as you said, you know, it's one of the movies where pretty much the, I know you have the opening scene, which is filmed during the day. Um, so much of it though is filmed at night. Your, your lives, the whole cast and the crew, your lives must have kind of felt completely turned upside down because you're up all night filming and then you're asleep <laughs> during the day. How was that to deal with that? It was all just, it was all just so exciting. I was thought this is, you know, this is crazy. Like uh, Vigo and Billy Butler and I would leave set in the morning covered in blood and be in like rush hour traffic with uh, most people going to work. And we got a few, we got a few looks because we're like, we, there was no place to shower on the set. So we were all just covered in dirt and blood driving down the highway at eight in the morning. <laughs> So it was all just sort of, it was wacky and fun and kind of, you know, magical when you, you know, dream of being in movies and then you're in one, it's kind of unbelievable. <laughs> um, did you watch either, either two of the previous uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacres? Yes, I had seen the first one. And um, Jeff Burr and David Scow, the screenplay writer. This was this was kind of an interesting one, I thought, because it was there's a lot of humor in it, a lot mm -hmm. of tongue in cheek and a little like dark, dark humor. So yeah. I thought it was very different from the first one. I don't really think I saw the second one. I've seen them. I, I've seen them all, but they're all kind of blend together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you know, I think for me, the reason why I feel number three. Uh, really stands out uh, quite early on. I mean, the original, it, you know, it hands down, people will say the original is, is almost impossible to beat. Um, yeah. The second one kind of took a completely different turn. Um, and I think it kind of took a lot of fans at the time and even maybe now uh, completely off track. Um, but with the third one, it kind of, there are reminiscences of the original. So to me, it brought, the fans of the original, it kind of brought them back to the franchise. Um, and I kind of give Leatherface 3 a lot of credit for, for the continuation of Texas Chainsaw because I think it brings back to the original. I agree with you, Samuel. I think that's cool. <laughs> um, so as you mentioned, um, everyone was kind of really good on set. Everyone was really friendly, especially for yourself. Um, but your your general vibe, um, how how was it like? If you remember on on a general day to day, was it kind of like a jokey vibe? Was it 
very serious? Was it relaxed? Because as you mentioned, you're, you're filming such a gory and violent movie. You always kind of preconcept ideas is that it's really strict and stern and scary. No, that was the, it was the exact opposite. Jeff Burr is such a sweet man and <laughs> directing us. And there was a lot and a lot of laughter, <laughs> I have to say, particularly when I'm uh, nailed to a chair with grandpa in the corner. It was <laughs> hilarious. It was, it, was, it was so outrageous that we, we, you know, you have to laugh. And then of course, when you're filming it, you have to make it absolutely serious. So it was a wonderful balance mm -hmm. of like really getting the story right and also mm -hmm. having a wonderful time. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so uh, I, I always want to say I, I want to give you a lot of props for your performance in the movie, because I think your character was so, so relatable for a lot of people where very, you know, scared, timid. And then she she kind of almost goes a little bit psycho <laughs> towards the end. And I think you I think you played that perfect. Um, Thank you. you. Know, how does it feel uh, if you look back now and you watch the movie now, uh, how do you feel about your performance at that time? Um, I actually just recently watched it again all the way through. Um, and I'm actually, I'm pretty proud of it. I'm pretty proud. There's a, there's a good through line and I go crazy right when I should. Yeah. And um, I just love the end because I, you know, I survive and I'm totally badass at the end. <laughs> Exactly. How does it feel being one of the few people, like one of the few sort of survival people from, from such a grueling movie? You're part of a very elite group. <laughs> I know, a survivor girl. I think that's what they're called. I am yes. honored. <laughs> <laughs> um, so around that time, I mean, I know you were, you were filming uh, quite a few projects around that time. Uh, do you remember at all sort of when the movie was released and the general vibe uh, that the fan fans gave or uh, the general vibe of the movie when it came out? Well, there was a lot of controversy because the MPAA or they gave it a triple X rating, the first, mm -hmm. un first edit. So <laughs> they cut out a lot of the really fun, gory stuff. And I know Jeff, the director was very disappointed with it. And I don't, some of the fans at the time, I remember saying, you know, it's, where's the, where's the gore? Mm -hmm. um, but, so I don't think it, it, it got the fanfare that it deserved because it was kind of chopped up. Yeah, no, I, I can understand that. But I think, uh, I, you know, I kind of speak on, on, really for myself and for some people I've seen on certainly like fan made groups uh, that I think as time's going on, there's definitely so much more appreciation for the movie. Um, and it's really cool to see because I think it's a very underrated movie. Wow, well, thank you very much. Yeah, I think it's pretty clever. Mm. Even yeah, without absolutely. Extra, the extra violence. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, uh, so in general, um, for you, I know soon after you filmed, uh, again, another one of my very personal favorite movies that I think is criminally underrated, uh, Rapid Fire. Mm -hmm. um, and you play Carla in Rapid Fire. So again, for you, uh, what was the audition process like for that? And how did the role kind of come up for you? Well, that was interesting because that was, you know, a different time, you know, before internet, before, you know, putting yourself on tape or whatever. <laughs> um, so there was an audition process. It got down to four girls. And then each of us had a screen test with Brandon Lee, filming the scene where we were just about to jump in bed together. Um, and it was amazing because it was a full set. It was full, you know, camera, lighting, director. Uh, and I was just so nervous and so like what I want I really wanted the part and um however many days later they called and they said I got the part I just I couldn't believe it and I actually got to um rehearse with Brandon Lee 
um, privately, we would get together and rehearse and he was so nice and he was so excited about the film and he was super humble, super generous. It was just, it was really good. That was really, and then I got to meet Powers Booth who was amazing veteran, you know, great stories from his days and making films in the seventies and eighties. So that was a really, really, that was a big deal, that one. Absolutely. You know, I'm, I'm really happy you kind of brought up Brandon Lee. Um, you know, obviously, um, it, it's such a tragedy to, to what happened to him at such a young age. Um, do you have any memories of your times together? Um, I have a couple. Well, the, do you know, it's hard to explain, but he could run sideways, like crisscrossing his legs. Really? <laughs> wow. Like a crab. He could run sideways faster than I could run straight. He was incredibly wow. athletic. Um, and the other one is we were at the premiere in West Westwood. We just seen the movie on the big screen, you know, 20th Century Fox. Dun, da, 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 da. I was like, yes. <laughs> um, I'm like, I was in the dorm room just about a mile away from here, you know. Um, and so we were at the after party and he, Brandon came up to me and sort of like sarcastically said, you know, how does it feel to be at our first and last premiere? And I sort of laughed as if, you know, now our careers are over, jokingly. Mm -hmm. And it was his first and last premiere. So it was mm -hmm. kind of haunted me for a while because he was, you know, very instinctive and I don't know, and a lot of a lot of people have said he sort of knew he was gonna be only here for a little while. So it was that was wow. kind of Yeah, no, I, I can imagine. And because it was um, you know, I remember reading all the articles and all the messages about it. Um sort of uh you know, this is after it all happened. Um because it was such a a, a tragic tragic story and it was again it's you know at, at such a young age um I can imagine that would have taken such a lot of impact on like yourself and, and other people that have worked with him and knew him because you kind of always feel like like you said you remember those kind of key words that that are said and then you're like wow like you you, you just never know um but it's yeah. it's amazing to get to speak to someone that actually got to work with him um so it's really beautiful you shared the story so thank you Sure. Yeah, he was great. Um, so how did it feel for you again at, at for yourself at such a young age? And I know this was only a few years after uh, Leatherface 3. Uh, what was it like on such a big production and such a big cast as Rapid Fire? Yeah, well, it was certainly different than being bloody in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was enormous, you know, to be on the Paramount lot, to be mm -hmm. flying to Chicago to film on location, huge fight scenes, explosions, guns. It was amazing. Like I have been an action movie, you know, it was yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. 12, yeah, I, I shooting a 12 gauge shotgun to like a nine millimeter automatic, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it was really, you know, really yeah and, and I think again that's it's to me it's it's such an underrated action movie um you know I I yeah. really I'm really happy that uh, I feel like there's, there's a lot more people coming sort of back to it again um to, to movies like Rapid Fire and uh I, I love I love that movie so much and it's it's so cool to be able to speak to someone that was on it as well <laughs> well sure <laughs> Um, do you have any other particular fond memories on set uh, where maybe anything happened or moments where you were like, kind of it maybe hit you or um, yeah, just any kind of fond memories in general? Um, well, it's sort of a naughty story, but when, <laughs> uh, when Brandon and I had to do the love scene, we were both very uncomfortable and nervous and the, um, the director wanted me to show my bottom and I said uh, that's not in my contract it was just boobies only and um 
So Brandon very graciously agreed to show his, which was much better. Than mine. <laughs> and I think they tried to edit it so it looked like it was mine, but it was really him. <laughs> no way. I love the so idea that they still tried to turn it. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's, you know, a story that represents Brandon's gallantry and chivalry. <laughs> Um, well, and there was just a lot of fun moments working with Powers too, and it was just, you know, it's a long time ago, but it was all good. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, so uh, you kind of briefly touched on, um, during us talking about Leatherface, uh, the convention scene. Um, mm -hmm. So I know you've attended some conventions. Um, What's that whole world like for you? What does that feel like to attend a convention where you have all these people that are such a big fan of your work? It's it's amazing. I remember my first one, I was completely blown away that anyone remembered, you know, me and that there was such a thing as these conventions. Mm. It was about 10 years ago I did my first one. And just to meet the fans and to hear their stories and to be, you know, to be you know, important to them was really neat. There was a young girl who had watched a series I did called She-Wolf of London. And she said, mm -hmm. you know, watching you in that show gave me courage all through high school. And I'm like, I was crying. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really, it's a really great way to meet the fans and to, you know, just reminisce about the magic of the movies. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I always think as well, um, and I, actually, I'm very interested to know what your, your opinion was. So maybe the first time you attended, uh, I don't know if it was specifically a horror convention, but did you have a preconceived idea of maybe what horror fans would be like and were you maybe surprised? Because I, I spoke with people before and everyone's got this idea that horror fans are like crazy, like because they love this like violent sort of movies. Right. Uh, but actually, I feel like we're some of the most loyal fans. So what was your kind of preconceived idea? Yeah, I thought they would be like scary. I don't know why. It's like, <laughs> oh, you, you know, you're into violence, so you must be like dangerous. <laughs> and then I was floored. Everybody is so sweet so kind oh. and so loyal and really like the sweetest fans of any genre I can imagine like just really families coming up you know with little kids I saw um one man with three little boys and all the boys had Jason masks on <laughs> <laughs> and I was like oh the family that goes to horror conventions together so sweet yeah absolutely yeah you know, very down to earth yeah, um, you know, because that's the thing, because me, like me and my brother, my brother's seven years younger than me, so I get to kind of share that experience with him, but we got into horror through our mum, so, wow. so we, yeah, so we've kind of got that family chain as well with horror, um, but yeah, and I, and I find with horror fans as well, like, they'll, they'll always love, no matter what role you did in any kind of movie they'll always love you and they'll follow you for the rest of your career for that one role so yeah yeah it's it's neat do you have any particular standout moments you remember at a convention with fans or uh, something funny or crazy that happened <laughs> well it's always funny and crazy that's for sure <laughs> um Nothing, no, nothing outrageous has ever happened. You know, I have a pretty, I have a pretty uh, low key fan base, I think. <laughs> More, you know, not as huge as it's a Kane Hodder or something. Okay. But um, it's been fun to meet like the bigger horror stars too. One yeah. great one was we did a Texas Chainsaw reunion and we had Ken, Billy Butler, Jeff Burr, myself, and it was, and R.A. Mihailov, who played Leatherface. Oh. So it was really fun to, years and years and years later, hang out with the gang again, where, where we all started together, where, where I started. So yeah. that, was, that was pretty special. That's really cool, actually, that you got to kind of uh, have, have that reunion, because I know from previous guests I've had from, from other movies and franchises, they have, they've never had that real opportunity to get a whole 
almost whole cast reunion so that's really yeah. cool that you kind of got to have that did you get to kind of sit down and chat and reminisce on times oh yeah we all went out for dinner and we all hung out took you know group photos together and all that kind of stuff it was really neat it was oh, in Texas amazing. Texas uh, Frightmare or I can't remember the name Texas <laughs> hold them <laughs> <laughs> um so uh because it correct me if I'm I'm wrong uh just regarding Leatherface sorry I forgot to mention before uh the movie itself it wasn't actually filmed in Texas was it no it was filmed in uh the hills of the kind of the valley of Los Angeles mm -hmm. yeah so. um I mean I, I think all things considered I think I, I know a lot of people would have uh, preferred it to have been in Texas um however I think you did a pretty like set wise I think you did a pretty decent job with making it kind of look as almost authentic as possible yeah well I mean the the desert in California is kind of exactly like the desert in um in Texas and the house that uh we all filmed in that was a complete fake house that was built oh. in the middle of the woods so it was and a lot of the movie took place took place there so there was a lot of you know dark night in a house kind of expensive to go to texas to do that <laughs> yeah i think no exactly I, I think that was the logic but yeah yeah i can imagine a lot of it must have come down to sort of budget as well and and um yeah yeah and uh, it obviously plays a huge factor in a lot of these movies um uh, a quick question I have for you uh, regarding yourself, uh, whether it was when you first started or maybe it could be different now, um, who or what inspires you? Um, I think a good story inspires me. A good story, a good performance. So many, I mean, there's too many actors and actresses to count that have inspired me, but Jessica Lange was a big influence on me when I was younger and Meryl Streep, of course. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, that's, I love to, to see a story and listen to a story that either moves you or scares you or makes you cry. So a yeah. good story and compelling actors is what's very inspiring to me. <laughs> um, when you first started, did you have a particular dream role that you always wanted or do you still have a dream role that you would love to have? Well, that's funny. I in about 20 years ago, I moved to New York because my dream was to be on Broadway in cabaret. Wow. <laughs> then I realized I couldn't sing. So that dream <laughs> ended. <laughs> I actually took lessons and the, the teacher said, wow, honey, you really can't sing. <laughs> so well, that was my dream role that I had to, you know, put aside. I never know you might be able to come back to it you never know i could play like a non not maybe not the lead girl but maybe like one of the background dancers <laughs> <laughs> to be honest just to be on board like broadway alone would be such an amazing experience ah oh, that would be amazing yeah i never got that i did a lot of regional theater but i never got to broadway yeah <laughs> um so uh are you still uh like a, a active in acting or you may be delving into producing or writing so what are you up to these days these days i'm just i'm still studying and auditioning and i took a, about a five-year break from doing any of it and then sort of after the pandemic yeah. i said you know but i'm not you know why why stop you know why stop doing it so I've just gotten back into it in the last year. I did like a, a small TV series on full moon features called The Resonator. And then I did a little film called um, Headless Horseman that came out last October, where I have a little scene with a, I work for a drug dealer and I'm sort of like a badass, glamorous, bad lady. <laughs> so I'm, I'm getting my feet back in. Wow. So what so did you, was that when you had that break, was that something that you felt you needed or was that just something that you kind of, 
I don't know, maybe the, the love kind of faded a little while and then you kind of regained it back. Well, it was kind of a, it was a plethora of things. It was um, one getting older, you know, my agents decided, you know, to release me. And then I just sort of said, you know, well, I'm going to settle down and, you know, just do real jobs, you know, have a boyfriend, get married. And then with that, I'm like, that this is not working for me. So I stopped doing all this. <laughs> no, but to be honest, you, if, if you have that love and desire for something, there shouldn't, nothing should ever, ever stop you from doing that, you know. Um, I like that sometimes things happen for a reason, you know, maybe you you change agents and then something else comes up and you know that's as long as you always have that love and desire you have to keep going exactly and you know it's there's no there's no age limit on on acting so that's another good thing no see that's that's the one benefit about the whole scene is it doesn't matter what what age what gender what race you are there's there's a role for everybody out there oh yes thank you Sonia. that makes me feel better <laughs> <laughs> um so do you have any current up-and-coming projects or anything sort of in the pipeline um just i think you can find streaming headless horseman and resonator on full moon features app okay. charlie band i'm sure your fans all know charlie band <laughs> he's got a he's got an app with just uh, nothing but horror movies and um yes William Butler actually is a writer producer for him so he's written a bunch of really fabulous things baby oopsie baby oopsie 2 the resonator um so they've got some really fun projects and I'm sort of like back in touch with William and and you know playing again that's amazing. You know, I'm, I'm really excited to see sort of what, what the future holds for you. Um, is there any social medias or anything that maybe people can follow you on so they can keep up to date with your career or what's happening? Um, I have a Kate Hodge Facebook with um, the there's a werewolf icon on it. Uh, it's my actor page. And I'm really bad about Instagram. I've got to get I've got to get more <laughs> on that. Yes, you got to get on Instagram. That's where it's at at the moment. <laughs> I know. I need some training, so I'm going to get get that going. Okay, I'll I'll make sure I'll link your Facebook page down in the description as well as the streaming services uh, for your movies. Um, Great. Kate, it's been an absolute pleasure to be able to speak to you today. Um, I really can't wait to see what you do in the future, and thank you for taking time out of your day to speak to us. Thank you, Samuel. It was really a lot of fun.